Hey guys, hello gorgeous. Got a Blu-ray review for you. It's Batman the Killing Joke. Now I have never read the original Killing Joke comic book. I am a fan of Batman, but I guess some of the diehards would say I'm not because I haven't read every single issue. I didn't even go and see Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. I still haven't seen it because it just doesn't interest me. And uh, that might be really difficult for some people to understand. They're like, oh, you have to see it. No, you actually don't have to see it. The trailers, the, uh, the advertising, the hype, it's all bullshit. You don't have to go see anything you're not interested in. And I wasn't, so I didn't. But I was psyched to see this because um, as I have decided to uh, take a pass on the Affleck era of Batman, um, it's gotten me more interested in other things like re-watching the Bale stuff. Uh, I'm re-watching the Batman animated series uh, now, and it is really, really fantastic stuff. Batman Beyond. Uh, but I was especially pumped for The Killing Joke because I've always heard about The Killing Joke. Um, that it's one of the best Batman stories. And I absolutely love Mark Hamill as the Joker. Um, you know, it's gotten to the point where when I think of Mark Hamill, I think of Joker more than I think of Luke Skywalker. That's how brilliant he is at that character. And he is so passionate about it, too. I mean, he talks about Luke Skywalker, and he looks like he's asleep, and he's like, oh, I'm Luke. But you ask him about the Joker, and he's, he's like, oh, Joker. Like, he just lights up like a little boy. So... Uh, yeah, checked out Killing Joke, and, um, you know, it's a pretty simple story. Uh, right off the bat, uh, I gotta say the animation is beautiful. Um, being so used to the Batman anima animated series, and it's not necessarily connected to the animated series, even though Kevin Conroy is back as Batman and Mark Hamill is back as Joker. Um, it, it's not really a continuation of that original story, but... See, the thing is, I've got that baggage. As soon as you bring those actors back, people are going to draw comparisons, and I was one of those people. So um, I was expecting something a little more like the anim animated series, whereas this, I felt, was... Like, first of all, it's rated R. So do, if you got kids, do not let them watch this. And it's not like an R for the S word and a drop of blood. This is... Uh, there is some really... Uh, serious violence. Um, there's perversion, sexual perversion, um, really awful imagery. Uh, and, and they don't go, you know, to the extreme of, of some like anime that I've seen. Um, but in terms of a Batman uh, Joker story, it is some of the most awful stuff I've seen put to screen. Um, not even the live action movies, the uh, Christopher Nolan movies, I felt went that far with the dementedness of the Joker. So again, see, that's a problem for me. Um, tone, right? Like it might work perfectly fine in a comic book or a graphic novel. But in a cartoon, um, with what I bring to the to the table, the baggage that I have in terms of cartoons, um, for me, cartoons can have heavy stories. Um, sad things can happen in them, difficult things. I mean, that's how heroes are made. That's why so many cartoons are inspiring, um, because of the adversity. Um, but when, when there's so much awfulness happening, and the colors are so bright, and the animation's so pretty and beautiful, and a lot of the acting is chipper, like you hear in a lot of cartoons... If there's a disconnect, there's that, that tonal imbalance, and that's why it just didn't really work for me. I mean, it was an interesting story. I, I finished it. Uh, I thought it was interesting. It was just really seemed low on action for a Batman being played by Kevin Conroy and a Joker being played by Mark Hamill. Again, it's what I'm bringing, the baggage that I'm bringing from the animated series. Um, if you want to cast those guys... That's just going to happen. I mean, that's why in uh, The Dark Knight Returns, they went with Peter Weller instead. They wanted to say, no, this is a different thing. So leave your baggage at the door. No connection, no tonal connection, no story connection, no nothing. And uh, I enjoyed that one a lot more, the Peter Weller one, uh, Dark Knight Returns Part 1. Uh, but for this, it just felt like, you know, it's it's too bright. And I know it's the Joker, right? And he's 
He's a happy guy. He's always joking and smiling. But I don't know. Personally, I felt like it didn't accomplish what it set out to accomplish. Um, and then as far as the ending goes, it felt... I mean, in terms of performances, uh, this was Mark Hamill's best ever as the Joker. Uh, even though I haven't seen all of the animated series, I thought like this sounded like he was so into it. He was so passionate about it. He gave it his all. And I actually, at some points, even though it's voice, voice acting, I thought, wow, like amazing, amazing. He's got to get, it's too bad that voice actors don't get nominated because that is a, is a performance that is worthy of some sort of award to, to put up against live action actors. So that's Hamill, what he brought to the table. And to contrast that, I felt like Kevin Conroy, who is awesome, can do no wrong, um, really was just the same old Kevin Conroy. I mean, if this was the story that was supposed to push Batman to his limits, I don't know. I guess I should say if Conroy couldn't pull it off, no one could have pulled it off because because he is the definitive animated Batman. But it just felt like he was going through the motions. So, uh, you know, and especially in the final scene, um, the final thing he does to not give it away, but he does something. He it's hard to not give it away, but I'll just say that the last thing you hear from him it just sounded forced. It didn't sound genuine. Um, so that's what I took from it. I mean, like I said, I, I got, I watched the whole thing. I thought it was interesting, an interesting story. I just didn't feel like it uh, pulled off what it set out to do. And I'm not one to rate movies. Uh, I've never been able to do it when I've tried. You know, this is a three out of five and this is a four out of five. It just doesn't work for me. The way that I rate and judge movies is replay value. For me, something that's great is something that I want to watch again. If I need to watch it right away again, that's amazing. Like Fury Road, after watching Fury Road, I wanted to watch that thing immediately again. That's a great movie to me. If I watch something once and then go, I'll never watch this again ever. I have no desire to ever watch this again. Even on the most slow, boring day ever, I will never put this on and watch it again because once was enough. And that's Batman the Killing Joke for me. Once was enough. It was interesting. I'm glad I watched it. Um, it wasn't terrible, awful. Um, you know, it wasn't a waste of my time and I want my money back or anything like that. But, um, you know, it was just kind of there to me. It was it was a ultra violent episode of the uh, Batman animated series and really nothing more. So uh, I wish that it had lived up to the legend of the killing joke for me. Uh, Mark Hamill's performance was the highlight of the film for me. Definitely check it out for that. But uh, other than that, um, you might not want to get your hopes up too high. If you're going into it as I did, as not the world's biggest Batman fan, just an admirer of the Cape Crusader and kind of curious about this uh, story that everybody says is the definitive or one of the definitive Batman stories. So if you have an uh, opinion of The Killing Joke, uh, if you want to talk about some of the differences between the comic and the movie, scroll down and go to town. And if you want to keep up to date on my videos, hit subscribe, join the Nerd Tribe. Thank you for watching. Nerd Mistake. And away it we go.